We have entered the transfer portal and I have a huge decision to make. After an up and down season with Stanford, I was unsure if I wanted to stay. The offensive line wasn't developed, the receivers could hardly catch a ball, and the offensive playbook did not suit my play style. Over the offseason, I went back home to discuss this with my parents, and my mom thought it was a no-brainer. She was like, son, what the hell, man? How can you leave Stanford? No way, no how. But coming back home to play in Tennessee or heading out to a big school like OU or Alabama were definitely schools that I wanted to entertain. The max capacity at Stanford Stadium was also around 50 000, which is definitely not bad but comparing to some of the schools that were recruiting me that had over a hundred thousand seats and so much national media coverage I also felt like I was kind of missing out in that aspect as well But I decided to listen to my mom once again and come back to Stanford We had a wide receiver room full of juniors and seniors Barrow is one of the best running backs in the nation Senior Jack Lehrer is leading the defensive side of the ball and the preseason polls have us ranked 25th in the nation So after a long offseason of bulking up and upping my game We are ready to start our sophomore season against Southern Miss we start out firing with a dart to my left for our first touchdown of the year. Then we later on work back to our right side for the touchdown again as we stomp over Southern Miss to start the year 1-0. We face a much tougher challenge in week 2 against number 13 ranked Washington. I'm rolling to my left looking for an open receiver. The D-linemen are catching up to me and I make this absurd throw to Higgins who gets some great yak. And he picks up 45 yards which ends off with a barrow touchdown to tie the game up. Later on in the third, third and goal, nobody is QB spying me. Are you kidding me? Washington did you do your homework? We gotta get clutch now in order to seal our first ranked win of the year. I'm rolling out to my right looking for a receiver and I find Higgins again who toe taps a TD to go up two possessions and we win against number 13 Washington to start out 2-0. My first play of the game of the year. Stanford is starting to turn heads. We are now the number 22 team in the nation as we are back home for our home debut. Washington State is the opponent and I look for a throw that nobody in the stadium could find. That's all those years of trigonometry coming into play there. Nobody saw that angle at all. Later on in the game, I'm rolling to my right. I'm looking deep. I'm giving my receiver a chance. Michael Wilson mosses him. Well, he, he kind of did. I, I don't really know if that's a touchdown or not, but hey, I, I'm taking it. We stop over Washington State over the air and on the ground as we go for six total touchdowns and 323 passing yards. Stanford fans are ecstatic at my play so far this year as we are now the number 20 team in the nation. We are slowly moving up the polls. However, there were plenty of one-loss teams ahead of us, even two lost teams. Still weren't getting the respect that I felt like we deserved. Maybe it's a little bit of ALM. I don't know. We keep it moving down to Utah. I drop back on second and goal. I'm looking to the outside and I put it on the dime to Elijah Higgins. Him and Wilson have been going off this year. We finally had an offseason to work with the two and it clearly pays off as they throw a deep dime to Michael Wilson right in his bucket. That is just physics. I'm calculating the amount of air I'm putting under that ball, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody is thinking the game of football like me as I keep throwing tutties. I keep playing like this, I might win a Heisman as I go for five touchdowns. And we start the season 4-0, and oh, which is good enough to be the number 16 team and the nation. Stanford fans are going crazy right now. They have not seen a team that looks this good since 2011. We move on to game five against Oregon State. The team that not only beat me last year, but injured my shoulder and ended my freshman year early. I was extremely locked in to start this game as I go one for one, two for two. Three for three, touchdown. Four for four, five for five, six for six, seven for seven, touchdown. Eight for eight, nine for nine, ten for ten, touchdown. And we survive a near upset by Oregon State to move to five and oh. We are now the number nine team in the nation. The first time Stanford has been top 10 since 2018. We're also the number three passing offense in college football. And it's time to put that passing offense on display back home against ASU. First play, I look for my slot receiver over the middle for a 23 yard game. And then I come right back to him for the touchdown to start the game off. Next quarter, I start out with a throw to my new tight end sophomore Bradley Archer we call him big boy Brad around here and that is for good reason because this guy's a monster middle of the second here I'm rolling to my right I throw a terrible interception I thought I had the check down there but then the defender lays his body weight on me and I get injured on the follow-through of the play this keeps me out all the way until the fourth quarter and our lead has been reduced to four our backup QB needs to seek employment this football is definitely not for his ass 246 left we need a score to ice the game don't see anyone open downfield. I'm rolling back to buy some time. I evade the sack. I come back. I evade another one. Get your cameras out, ladies and gentlemen. I'm rolling it up, and I hit my receiver for a first down. I was 
not getting taken down right there, and we end it off with a Barrow touchdown. We defeat ASU to stay undefeated and move to 6-0 on the season. And we are now the number six team in the nation. College football playoff discussions are starting for Stanford as we are ahead of teams like Alabama and reigning champions Florida. But not only that, I am now in the Heisman Watch. The only QB in the discussion. Momentum is picking up for the boy. All that offseason work is coming to fruition. As we move on to our next game against Notre Dame. I thought it was going to be the first Asian versus Asian QB battle we've ever seen. But I find out my brother, my cousin, Tyler Buckner has been benched. Come on, bro. They're three and four. They're unranked for a reason. But this atmosphere was insane, ladies and gentlemen. By far the loudest crowd I've ever played in front of. 80,000 screaming in the stands as we start out with a near pick. The crowd is roaring as on second and 10. I got to throw it out of bounds. We start off 0-2. Third and long. I stay composed in the pocket. I'm looking and I fire a strike up the middle to Higgins for a first down, which is followed up by a hook route to Wilson. Who brushes the Notre Dame defenders off like they're nothing for some extra yak. First and goal. I'm rolling out to my right. I'm using my legs. Notre Dame in man coverage, and I walk in for an easy touchdown to start the game off. Later on in the second, I hit big boy Brad on the out route. He demolishes that defender for the touchdown. This is a grown man, ladies and gentlemen. He is not a sophomore as we head into the fourth. I'm looking at who else up the middle but big boy Brad. We're here to get it back in blood for my brother Buckner. How dare you bench a fellow Asian f this bald Italian. Give me my brother his job back, Angeli. We come out of Notre Dame with our best away win of the year and by far the most hostile crowd I've ever played in front of. And we are officially in a college football playoff spot. The number four team in the nation is the Stanford Cardinal. Jalen Milrow joins me in the Heisman discussion as the only QBs. And we play our highest ranked opponent of the year, number eight Oregon. Pac-12 matchup as well. This is the game of the year for us. Away in Eugene as they have one of the best pass rushers in the nation in Kyler Casper, who's paired with Christian Gonzalez, one of the best corners in the nation. So our game plan was clear. We wanted to slide protection towards Casper the entire game. And we're not throwing to Gonzalez's side. We're throwing at number 12. Whoever that guy is, he's getting all the action today. Defense also is going to have their hands full as Oregon has one of the best receiving corps in the nation. But I believe in my dogs as Bo Nix starts with the ball. I didn't know he was black. And he comes out firing with a deep ball down the field and it's picked off by Bonner. What a start for our defense right there, that is exactly what we needed. And we respond with a touchdown up the right side to Higgins. Who finds a hole in the zone. What a catch. What a start. The black bow next is back on the ball. He's got plenty of time in the pocket. No idea what my D-line are doing. But he throws another interception. Two straight interceptions for Bo Nix as we are rolling to our right. And we find who else? Big boy Brad for another touchdown to go up 14-3. to three. And we're still following the game plan. We're not throwing to the left. Where Christian Gonzalez resides, we are still threading balls deep to the right. And we cash out a touchdown at the end of this drive for a 21 to 3 lead. Third and inches here. We can't hold up protection against Casper, so we have to throw it away. Fourth and inches, and coach said I'm aggressive. We are not laying the foot off the gas as we hand it off the barrel for the first down. And I gotta repay my coach's trust, so I'm looking back to the right side. You know who I'm finding? Michael Wilson, who routes up Tucker for the touchdown. But Bo Nick says not so fast as he leads his team into a one possession situation. 108 remaining. Can the defense get a stop for the win? Bo Nix drops back. Deep ball to Lowe, who gets a step on our DB for the first down. What a game. Nix comes back, second down, ropes one over the middle to Coda. And we get called for a flag for face mask, which puts Oregon on the three-yard line in two plays. Defense is letting us down on this last drive, and Caldwell walks in to tie the game up. So here we go, 41 seconds left in the fourth. Will I choke again on the biggest stage? Let's find out. I throw a ball up the seams to Tremaine for a beautiful start to the drive. Next play, I'm looking to attack the right side to Tucker once again, but he makes a great play on the ball. Luckily, he didn't get his feet in, and we survive a near scare. 16 seconds left, third and five. All we gotta do is get in field goal range. I hit the out route again. Coach quickly calls timeout, and we have a chance for one last play to get us in better field goal position. I start scrambling out. I'm gonna do it myself. I try to cut back in there, but luckily, I stepped out of bounds, which beautifully sets up a game-winning field goal opportunity. Bang! What a game. What an ending right there as we take down number eight, Oregon, to remain undefeated and on top of the 
Pac-12. I throw for 314 and four touchdowns, and I move up the Heisman rankings. But more importantly, we are now the number three ranked team in the nation. And after back-to-back -back wins against UCLA and USC, we are now the number two ranked team in the nation at 10 and 0. And now comes the big game. One of our biggest rivals, we arrive at Cal. We enter the second half with a two possession lead. We are officially in danger of an upset, ladies and gentlemen. First and 10, I layer the ball to my crossing route. And he gains me 46 yards to set up the field goal to make it a one possession game. Defense gets a stop and we're back in a scoring position. I pitch the ball to my boy Barrow and there is no stopping this man. He is getting in the end zone. We follow that touchdown up with another field goal to put us up four with one minute and two seconds remaining in the game. All we need is a stop to survive the upset. First and 10, Tagaloa throws a nice little four yard game. And the Golden Bears are running hurry up offense. This is electrifying football, ladies and gentlemen. Did they really just do that to spike the ball? Third and six. This could be a big play in the game, but Tagaloa makes a nice play over the middle to, oh, to pick up the first down, which then he comes back with another out route to Plummer for a nice 14-yard game. 34 seconds left. First and 10. Out oh, my... This is why white DBs aren't in the game. Tagaloa going through his progressions. He looks deep. This could be game. Are you kidding me? A walk-off touchdown on the last drive of the game. And Cal completes the upset. They hand us our first loss of the season. We lose the big game and this dropped us all the way down to number nine in the nation. And with just one game left against unranked army, our chances of making it into the playoff were really, really low. But I still had to run the score up with four 50 yards and four touchdowns because in the sport you just never know sometimes college football voters they love a great story and they've never seen an asian qb like me in their life so that concludes our regular season we finish as the number seven team in the nation heading into a bye week before our pac-12 championship game i go back home to tennessee and my mom isn't happy she wants me to break all the records and bring all the awards home and i came back empty-handed she did make me dinner this time though because i was announced as an award finalist for the maxwell award the walter camp award and the o'brien award most important Importantly though, I am the only QB in the running for the Heisman as Milrow faded out. So after a great two week break, spending it with family and my math tutor, I fly back out to the West and now it is on to the Pac-12 championship game. This is our last chance to make it into the playoff. Bama and Georgia play each other so one loser could fall out. We would need Nebraska to lose against Indiana, but even if that game is close, we have a chance. So we meet again with ASU, the number 17 team in the nation and the number one team out of the Pac-12 South. And I'm locked in to start this game. First pass, I high point it to my boy, big boy Brad. And make that back-to-back -back passes to Brad, which I thought that was a touchdown. But we do finish the opening drive with a touchdown to put up six on the board. ASU comes back down the field and gets a touchdown to respond. But we come right back down the field on first and goal. Rolling out to my right, nobody looks open, but I find a way to fit it in the end zone for another touchdown, and that breaks another record. The most passing touchdowns in Stanford history, breaking Andrew Luck's previous record. This is one of the biggest accomplishments of my life. And this one got out of hand quick. We were playing great complimentary football. Defense was going crazy. Offense was unstoppable. We are killing ASU as I look for my Heisman moment. Team bump to Wilson for the touchdown. 71 yard reception. And I end up throwing for seven touchdowns this game, which breaks yet another school record. We're most passing touchdowns in a game set by John Elway in 1980. A 42 year record has been broken as we win the Pac-12 championship. Stanford's first Pac-12 championship since 2015. The Chinese QB has brought a trophy to the far. Eight total touchdowns for the boy as I win Pac-12 championship MVP honors. And we are officially champions of the West, winning 56 to 20. I finally get to bring some hardware home to my Asian mom. This is the best day of my life. But now is the moment of truth. Did our performance convince the voters? Can we make the playoff? Before we get into all that we have won the most prestigious individual award in college football the heisman trophy winner is a chinese man a stanford electrical engineer has won the heisman i never thought i'd see this day but china officially runs football we've also won the maxwell award for best all-around player in collegiate football and we get our third award the o 
O'Brien Award is awarded to the best college football quarterback. We finish with three awards, but we finish as the number five team in the nation, just missing out on a playoff spot. There's no way we won the Pac-12 as the Heisman winner, and I don't make it into the playoff, man. That's gotta be ALM or something. But we have a chance to leave with more silverware as we get to play in the infamous Rose Bowl. A game that has made legends such as Vince Young and Mark Sanchez. I wanted to add my legacy on that list as we play Indiana. They start the Rose Bowl off with a touchdown. Head into the second quarter here. I hit the hook route to my boy Higgins who escapes from the DB and he takes it all the way. 60 yard touchdown to put us on the board. We move to the second half tied at 14. First and 10. I'm looking. I'm looking. I got plenty of time. I'm looking downfield. Up to Wilson who makes the toe tap grab for a 50 yard game. And he sets a school record as well. Most receiving yards in a season since Troy Walters in 1999. That's my boy Michael Wilson right there, man. I felt like he should have won the Belinikov. Third and six. Still a tie game. I'm looking. Nobody is open. I'm rolling out. I'm running for the end zone. One man to beat. Air Hefe is cleared for takeoff. Heisman moment right there, ladies and gentlemen. I want the Rose Bowl. Less than one minute left in our first bowl game. We are up by seven. Basilak drops back. He whips the ball to his right and Cooper makes a ridiculous touchdown grab. Defense once again couldn't come up with a stop to win the game and we are headed to overtime. Our first ever OT game in college. We will start on defense. And it just takes two plays for Basilek to get into the end zone to go up in OT. If we do not score on this drive, this game is over. Indiana playing very stout defense in the red zone here. I'm having trouble. I gotta throw the ball away. Third and 11. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm scrambling. I look to gain it by my legs, but I come up short. So it's fourth and six for the game. Need to get in the end zone here. What will I do? I snap the ball here. I read man coverage across the board. So I take off knowing there's no spice set and I get in the end zone. To keep our Rose Bowl hopes alive. Now we start on offense for second OT. I'm rolling out to my left. I'm looking for an open receiver. I see Higgins. Great dot at the left corner of the end zone and we take the lead again. But Indiana comes back and they tie the game right up with a pitch. So now we are in third overtime. Defense gets a stop to make it third and 12. Basilak. Look at, look at, look at. Throw it outside and it's incomplete. Indiana settles for a field goal, so now we just need a touchdown to win. First and ten, I roll out to my right, and I find Falcons for the first down. However, Indiana's defense does not break as on third and goal. Looking to clinch the Rose Bowl, I take off, but the defender makes a clean tackle. We have to settle for a field goal again. So now we are in fourth overtime. The longest game I've ever played, and I hand it off to Barrow. He finds the hole, blockers ahead, and he gets in the end zone. And coach opts to go for two. We are getting aggressive. I roll out to my right, no one smiles me again. What a mistake. Now Indiana needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion to keep the game going. Juan's almost scores on the first play off a screen, but he gets in the end zone with an easy walk-in touchdown. But here it is, one stop, and we are Rose Bowl champions. What will the defense do about it? And they pick it off! Ladies and gentlemen, the Stanford Cardinal are your 2023 Rose Bowl champions. Another trophy brought home for the Cardinal fans. And a great way to cap off our sophomore season as we win a 4 OT game against Indiana. It was a fantastic year for me as I have put the nation on notice. I am rising in mock drafts for the NFL and my game is only gonna get better. However, I don't know how good this roster will be next year. Michael Wilson and Brandon Barrow are both heading off into the NFL and I want to compete for a national championship. Do I enter the transfer portal to go to a football school to solely focus on my football career? We'll find our answer to that question in the next episode.